Look, I'm not going to beat around the bush with this one. If you've seen my other two reviews of the first two parts of this trilogy, or you just watched them on your own and you ended up here, I think this is kind of what everyone thought it would be for the first two thirds. And maybe the final act is what surprised everyone. Straight up, it's anticlimactic. It is padded out to kingdom come. <laughs> See what I did there? And honestly, just repetitive. How many times can we watch the heroes fight shadows or shoot laser beams, light beams at the anti-monitor and it having no effect or fighting Nazis and T-Rexes and all and action scenes that don't really matter or further the plot, but are just there to have content. How many times can we see all that before it just gets stale? Apparently a lot in this trilogy. It's just this trilogy, the way it was approached and how it's edited, how the non-linear structure is told, feels completely unnecessary. I honestly have thought about myself, but someone needs to re-edit this into a more cohesive thing to where it doesn't feel so scatterbrained all the time. And I think you could cut a good bit of it out. It's extremely uneven. And you know, whereas part one felt like a contained story with an ending until that final like section even then it still works as like a tragic movie and was very moving with how it depicted the non-linear narrative because of how flash was experiencing time it worked for me there in part two it didn't at all i found it to be extremely hard to follow and difficult to watch and it wasn't horrible it just wasn't interesting like it should be and this one is doing a lot of that until it didn't then it got me what they do with all the threads that had been building in the Tomorrowverse, and if you have, have seen the DC animated movie universe that came before the Tomorrowverse that led into this, they have rewarded patience, longtime fans of these straight to DVD movies, and even longer time fans of DC animation as a whole. Now when I say they've rewarded fans, I mean they connect to all the different shorts, release straight to video, they connect to other movies in other universes, they connect to TV shows. They touch almost everything. And that was actually pretty incredible in the cameos worked. They're extremely sad. Now I can see it be a, being a problem if you haven't seen it at all, but it worked for me because I have. I'm the target audience. So when it hits, it was profoundly touching, gestating a state of emotion in me that I was not prepared for and oddly acting as an end, a befitting end to DC animation as we know it. It's been a good ride. And that ultimately in the third act becomes, it takes the anticlimax and flips it on its head for emotional storytelling and emotional weight that I wasn't expecting. And I kind of suspect that it's doing this as a coda because the new DCU is supposed to be connected across animation, film, video games. And maybe they won't be doing these anymore. Of course, Watchmen's getting an, another adaptation whatever but if that's what's happening i have been a fan of these straight to dvd movies for you know close to 20 years and i've been watching the dc animation stuff since i was a toddler or younger thank you for all the memories thank you for the send-off i hope there are more to come in these maybe more standalone tales but thank you for the memories and for that it squeaks out a more positive score i give justice league crisis on infinite earths part three three out of five stars it's been pretty publicly touted but the kevin conroy mark hamill send-off made me tear up gave me chills as it did several other moments and that's why it's important to always look for the good <laughs>